Welcome back. This is a Tutor Wizard. I'm Adrian. Please subscribe right here and hit the notification bell. You'll get notifications for this series and a bunch of other ones on our channel. We're doing multivariable calculus, chapter two. Here we go. Double and triple integrals. Did you enjoy when you did single variable calculus, techniques of integration, substitution rule, integration by parts, partial fraction decomposition, trigonometric integrals, trigonometric substitution, hyperbolic substitution, all kinds of substitutions, more, more, more. Now we're going to do it with more than one variable. The first section we're going to do, we'll take it in baby steps, as baby as we can make them in this functions of more than one variable. Double integrals over rectangles. We're going to mimic the idea of Riemann sums, but instead of over an interval and above a positive curve, we're going to do this over a rectangle and a positive surface. This lecture specifically, we're going to do Riemann sums one more time, just to remember. Then we're going to mimic that idea exactly for a function of two variables and give the definition of double integral and some examples. Let's do that. Again, before we start double integrals, we're gonna, we're gonna mimic this idea for a function of two variables. Riemann sums say we take a positive function and the graph of that technically, f of x. We take an interval, which is a closed interval, a, b. Then we chop it up into a partition, we call it in fancy terms, and you can make the partition where there are different widths, but why would you do this? So we make it where it's always the same width. Delta x is always going to be what is delta x. Recall, delta x is b minus a over n. Why? The length of the whole interval is b minus a, and then we're chopping it into n equal pieces. So each of those pieces is one nth of b minus a, the length, and so you get delta x is this. Also, if I go to x i star, who technically is that? If I was actually gonna start here, this would be x1, x2, x3. And how much is that? That's starting, I would have to go the distance a, then 1 delta x, 2 delta x, 3 delta x. So that's a plus 3 delta x, or x3 star. And in general, that says a right-hand endpoint is calculated as a plus delta x i. Once we have those, those are right-hand endpoints in the definition of Riemann sums, and therefore the definition of a definite integral. If we have a positive function f of x, the area under f of x and above the interval a, b is equal to this limit of this sum if it exists and we write the symbol, the integral from a to b of f of x dx and it's a number and it represents the area under the function and above the interval if the function is positive. You can get zero and negatives if you don't make sure your function is positive. You take the absolute value. Next. Now mimicking the idea of Riemann sums for a function of one variable. Now I have a domain possibly, but we're gonna focus on a rectangle first. What I do to create a rectangle is it's the Cartesian product or AB, the interval AB, Cartesian product or cross CD. This is the notation we're gonna use eventually. What we're doing now is we take that rectangular box and we chop it up we chop just like we did with Riemann sums, we chop up the interval a, b into n equal parts, delta x's, and then we chop the y's into m equal pieces, possibly different partitions, but we'll have an m and an n, and then you can push them both to infinity. And then what we're gonna do is, you also have to pick a sample point. The sample point in there is gonna be x, i, j star, y, i, j star. They're gonna get multiple indexing for the whatever dimension or function of however many variables you're using. In this case, two, so we're going to get ij's. Oh, I forgot the j's. There, that's why they're all double indexed because we're doing a function of two variables. Now, what we're doing is we're saying that the area of one of those rectangles is delta a, which is now delta x times delta y. And then the volume of one of these boxes, we now look at the surface s, which is the graph of our function of two variables. Underneath that rectangle, we're going to have a certain volume of that object. If we want specifically, it would be from wherever it's going to be actually these points specifically up to there and then to there and then to there. Underneath that portion of the surface, under that rectangle, I now have a volume of that box that has a weird surface on the top. Now, if you have a function of two variables which is positive, the volume underneath that surface and above the rectangle R is the double integral of f of x, y over the rectangle 
R, which is AB cross CD. And that is our new notation is double integral over the rectangle R of our function of two variables. And now we use DA for the area. And that is going to be DX, DY when we actually compute these things. And what is that by definition? Just like in Riemann sums, that is going to be a limit as m goes to infinity and a limit as n goes to infinity. We chop this into n regions. We chop this one into m. We push those finer and finer. We get uh, finer and finer partition in both directions of our rectangle. And then we push that to infinity. And what this represents is the volume of each of the boxes. And then we've summed over all those boxes and we make the refinement finer and finer. And just like Riemann sums and the definition of definite integral for a function of one variable, we now have double integrals. Let's do iterated integrals and some examples of how to compute. How do we compute double integrals? The first way to do this over rectangles is we're going to use what we call iterated integrals. What's an iterated integral? If we have a function of two variables, what we're going to do is we're going to use this symbol, the integral from c to d of f of x, y. Now remember the function has both x and y in there. But what we're going to do is we're going to use this symbol to mean that just like in partial differentiation, we're going to hold x constant and integrate with respect to y. And this is in fact sometimes called the partial integral of f of x, y with respect to y. This will give us a function a of x, which is entirely a function of x now. Can we see why? Let's think about this for a second. We're holding x constant, just like we do in partial derivatives, but now we're going to integrate, find the antiderivative of the y's. So now we're going to get a function that there might have been x as a constant, and then we're going to have a function of y's in there. We took the antiderivative of the y part. And then we're evaluating by the fundamental theorem of calculus part due at CD. So then we're going to do F of D minus F of C, which is, and we're going to plug those values into where Y is. And it's going to make all the Y's disappear. They're going to go away and we get numbers for the Y's at least. Then we have a function of just X. And then what are we going to do? We're going to integrate that function of X with respect to X over A D B. And we now get the double integral over that rectangle under our curve f of x, y, but now using an iterated integral. And this thing on the right hand side is what we call the iterated integral. Let's try one. All right, example one, we're going to compute this iterated integral two ways. Notice that first of all, we have the same integrand in both cases. And what we're doing, and if you want to do this to help yourself at first, put some brackets in there for yourself. And then what the brackets help you do is you focus on what's inside the brackets and I in the first one I know I'm going to ignore dx and I'm going to hold x constant and then integrate with respect to y and that first the brackets help me immediately see that I'm going to ignore x and hold a constant and integrate y. Let's do that. When I do that for one I have the integral from zero to one of what I'm going to do is hold x constant and integrate y. That gives me x times one half y squared evaluated from 0 to 2 by the fundamental theorem of calculus part 2 dx. Then what do I do? Now I use the fundamental theorem of calculus part 2 to actually compute the integral from 0 to 1 of this will be x over 2 times what? I can put that's a constant I'm holding it. That'll be 2 squared minus 0 squared dx. Cleaning this up we get the integral from 0 to 1 of 2x dx and now integrating with respect to x that's going to give me 2 over 2x squared evaluated from 0 to 1 by the fundamental theorem of calculus. Oh that's the fundamental theorem of calculus. Part 2 f of b minus f of a. It's important I tattooed it on myself so this is what? It's never going to go away even in multivariable and I have to do it for several different variables x and y and z. What do I get? This gives me x squared evaluated from 0 to 1, which gives me 1 squared minus 0 squared, which is 1. It's an integer. The area above x, y, or below x, the surface x, y, and above the rectangle 0, 1 cross 0, 2 is the value 1. Let's see now if I get the same thing. This sort of gives you a check you're going to turn out. It's not going to be a mistake. I'm stealing my own thunder, but this one better be the same value. It's true by Fubini's theorem is what it's going to be called. Let's check the other direction. We got one. Hopefully we get the same thing. Otherwise, mm -mm -mm, we're going to have to rewind and try again. What's the lesson? If you don't get it right, try it again. 
It doesn't mean you don't know how to do math. It means try it several more times. I, I. Now the integral from zero to two of the integral from zero to one of x, y, dx, dy. Now I put the brackets for myself at first. That means I'm holding y constant and I'm going to integrate x. That is going to give me the integral from zero to two of y over two x squared evaluated from zero to one dy. Now I put that in there. That will give me the integral from zero to two of x is going to be one minus zero. So that will give me y over two dy. And that's going to give me, now I integrate with respect to y. And that gives me one over two times one half y squared evaluated from zero to two, which is going to give me what? One over four, two squared minus zero squared, which is four over four, which is one. So it did work. This is not a coincidence. This is the result of the next theorem. Fubini's theorem. This example one was not a coincidence. We have, if F is continuous over a rectangle AB cross CD, then by Fubini is the first one to prove it. And I'm going to guess Volker Runda's rule of if it's called that, he's probably not the first one to do it. So look it up and put in the comments. Actually, it wasn't Fubini. Our species has it now. Steal it from whoever did it the first time. More than one person probably did it. Blah, blah, blah. The double integral now that we've defined over a rectangle, you can compute using either iterated integral, y first, then x, or x first, then y. Both of them will compute the same thing. This is quickly saying I have a surface like this, a rectangle below it. What that's going to do is give me, if I could have drawn this correctly, this back, dot, 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 back there, and then this one. It gives us the volume of a surface, roughly speaking, and what that is now, if we have a function of two variables, which is positive and continuous, actually it can be discontinuous at a finite number of points in there, but okay, whatever. <laughs> if it's continuous in there, and then over this rectangle, then the volume of that rectangle is this symbol, and you can compute that volume using either iterated integral. Let's do one more example. All right, compute the double integral of one plus four x y, if we have a rectangle which is 0, 1, cross 1, 3. Again, if you do really actually want to do that and you haven't drawn this a lot of times, you may want to picture that for yourself. Not to scale, but there's 0, 1. Okay, move them back a little bit. There's 0, 1, and then it's going to be cross 1, 3. So y is going to go from 1 to 3, and x is going to go from 0 to 1. This is our rectangle r. And then what happens to that is we do this to it, and then it becomes the rectangle in that when we draw the z direction, and then our region will be over this rectangle coming out of the board at us. And then the volume will be like this, is what we're going to compute the volume of that thing. Let's do that. By Fubini's theorem, I can use either iterated integral, it doesn't matter, so let's change it up. I'll do the dx one first. If you're trying this at first, you might, because of the way they develop it in a lot of the books and the way I just did, you do the partial derivative or the partial integral of y, then x first always. And at first, you just stick to the same, so you just do dy first always. I'm going to do dx just to change it up. Try the other one for fun and see if you get the same answer. You better, or one of us is wrong. Could be me. It's probably you. One, I don't know why I'm doing one. If you're gonna do it two ways, you do it the other way. This is the in double integral over the rectangle of one plus four x y dA by Fubini's theorem is the integral from one to three of the integral from zero to one, because I wanna do x first of one plus four x y dx dy. And then if you really wanna help yourself with that to make sure you got it right, that says I'm integrating x first and I'm holding y constant. It doesn't matter though when they're a rectangle, when it's general regions. Oh, we got to change them. This is equal to now the integral from 1 to 3 of this integrated with respect to x. So I'm going to get x plus 4 over 2x squared y dy evaluated, sorry, from 0 to 1 by the fundamental theorem of calculus part 2. This guy, that's why I tattooed it. It's hard to remember to get it all right. This is now equal to the integral from 1 to 3 of what do I get? I put 1, the 0 luckily kills it, so I put 1 wherever that is, and I get 1 plus 
2y dy. Then I compute the integral with respect to y, which shouldn't be too bad. I like the 2 there even. This gives me y plus 2 over 2y squared from 1 to 3. And at least I don't have to compute any fractions. This is going to give me y plus y squared evaluated from 1 to 3, which is 3 plus 3 squared minus 1 plus 1 squared, which is, let's sneak it in, this is what? 9, 12 minus 2, which is a tenor. Did you throw a tenor in there? Yeah, I did. It's a niner, I think, in the movie. Tenor, niner, tenor. Please hit the notification bell right here and subscribe to get notifications for this series and many others. Next time, what we're going to do is just a bunch more iterated integrals trying to compute double integrals over rectangles. See you next time.